Hey guys, it's Chris Nichols here from the Camera Store, and again we are coming to you from New York City because Jordan and I have been invited again for another Sony press launch. We're desperately hoping it's the brand new A6100, but we may be in for surprise. There might be some other cameras that are very interesting. So we're gonna check that out. Whatever camera they give us, you're gonna get a video on it today. Now the other thing, you'll notice that it might be a little bit more shaky in our video style today. No, that's not Jordan making a creative style choice. Unfortunately, our monopod and also all of his clothes and toiletries are in Minneapolis still right now. So today's gonna be a bit of adventure. We're gonna explore New York City again and hopefully get Jordan some underwear and something that he can wear so he doesn't wear the same stop three days in a row. We're gonna hit the press launch here right away. Come with us, it's gonna be a fun one. Okay guys, so we're coming to you from the Sony press event. Now first off, it is loud. I know the acoustics are brutal, but it's quite the party up there. Now we've had a chance to see the brand new Sony A6300. We're taking a look at it. This video turns out it's gonna be more like a press launch kind of video because the A6300 is not final production. So we can't show you photos on that, but there are some exciting features. Also, we've got the brand new 85 1.4 right here. I'm covered in cameras. And we got the 24 to 72.8 as well. And of course the 70 to 200 2.8. Very exciting lenses, definitely target right at the pro market. Sony's trying to take a bite out of and just kick the crap out of Canon and Nikon. So we're gonna find some quieter in a bit. We're gonna talk more in depth about the stuff that we've seen here at the launch, but otherwise we're gonna get back in there and do some more shooting. Too bad we couldn't get that Sony A6300 out of there because the weather ceiling would make it perfect for shooting in a situation like this. But we did get some fantastic shots on the 24 to 72.8 and the 85 1.4, and yes, it is as good as you are hoping and thinking that it is. So we're gonna take these shots, get back to the hotel, look it on the computer, and evaluate them there. All right, so we're back at the hotel, and we certainly had a very exciting day. Got to see the A6300 and play with that. We're very excited to talk about that camera, but before we get to that, it's worth talking about its predecessor, the Sony A6000. I mean, such a revolutionary camera, by far the best-selling mirrorless we've ever seen. You know, it replaced the NEX6, which really got the ball rolling, but no camera before has supplanted Nikon and Canon SLRs like this camera. Everybody that comes in looking for a brand new entry-level camera, the A6000 is capable, it's fast, it's compact, and to Sony's credit, they priced it at a price point that easily competes with those cameras. Now the A6300, this is going a different route. This camera feels more sophisticated, more refined, and it's certainly more expensive, but uh, it's got some really powerful features that we will look at. Now I'm curious, who knows, I have a feeling in, in particular Sony tradition that they're gonna keep the A6000 running even though it's a fairly old camera in digital terms. They're gonna keep it running as an affordable entry level product and the 6300 is gonna be priced higher. Who knows, but we can't wait to find out what's waiting for us in the future. Now in outward appearance, the A6300 is almost exactly the same as A6000. Button controls, dial placements, everything is almost exactly the same. So where is it different? Uh, the 6300 has the same resolution sensor. Now, it was pre-production today. We were, uh, you know, verboten from putting any sort of memory cards in that camera, so we can't really judge image quality. But 24 megapixels, and Sony's pushing the new copper wiring in the backside, and we've heard that before from other manufacturers. So at best, it's gonna hopefully promise better low light performance and dynamic range over the A6000. We were never really complaining about the resolution on the sensor anyways. I mean, 24 is a good amount, so hopefully any extras will be a nice touch. We were thinking it might have been 36 though, but that's not gonna happen. Now the similarities don't end there. Unfortunately, we do have the same battery. Now, of course, we weren't able to really test today whether the battery life is better on this new camera, but it's still the W series battery. Hopefully we're gonna get an improvement there. That really is the only weakness that mirrorless cameras have nowadays. The viewfinder looks identical on the outside, but it's actually twice the resolution. 
very, very fast refresh rate. You can actually select that as well up to 120 frames per second. So, you know, really nice to look through. Other thing we noticed here is on the back dial with the A6000, we get a better wheel here on the back. It's just a little bit more positive. And it's nice that they did that because that is something that we have complained about in the past. Now the 6300 does improve the continuous frame rate by one frame per second. We're at 11 max with focus tracking. Now, I know this gets talked about a lot. It is very quick, but it still has a major downside. Basically what the alpha cameras have done up to this point is when you take pictures of this high frame rate, you see the last frame that it took, but it leads to this lag. You're trying to follow a moving subject, 11 frames per second, wildlife, for example, where these cameras still haven't been able to really break into the market. And you watch this animal and you're only seeing where it's been, not where it's going. And that's a huge downside. And SLRs don't have that downside. So I'm really excited about this next feature. The A6300 can shoot eight frames per second, which is absolutely respectable, but it gives you a live view with almost no blackout, basically mimicking what an SLR does. I get to see my subject moving in real time, make my adjustments from there. It is fantastic. And with the weather ceiling they've incorporated, I think the A6300 can really be a viable option to get in there shooting sports, journalism, and wildlife, something that people have so far shied away from with these cameras. Now one of the features that made the A6000 so popular was very fast autofocusing. Sony even pushed world's fastest AF, you know, in their presentation. And of course, two years ago, that might have been true, but a lot's changed since then. Panasonic have their DFD focusing, which is excellent. Fuji really stepped up the game in their focusing department. And the Sony A6000 nowadays seems a little bit ponderous compared to the competition. Now, of course, that all changes with the A6300. They have rectified that. This camera has a 425 point autofocusing system and it is fantastic. I've noticed you got a lot more control over where you can move your zones. Flexible spots are more flexible even now. And of course, you've got a lot of room to move your points around. Covers almost the entire frame. You've still got iStart AF and that is working great, but I really did like the new lock-on feature. Far more effective. You can see here, tracking moving subject, keeping it in, in frame, it was fantastic. On top of that, we've got another very cool feature. A lot like its bigger brother, the A7R Mark II, we now have a phase detect autofocus system as well. And with adapters, and we tried it with the Metabones and Canon lenses, this gives you that awesome autofocusing capability with other brands of glass. So, you know, this whole market of adapters is growing and growing and growing. We'd like to see Nikon autofocus support. That's coming, that's soon. A lot of manufacturers are pulling that out now. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll have some other cross platforms with other lenses as well so the future as far as focusing looks very good for the 6300 all right so the a6300 seems to have a brand new shutter mechanism you know in my hands it felt a little bit more stable much more gentle with the slap I always found that to kind of be an issue on the a6000 and of course you have electronic front curtain which helps with that which is great but the 6300 also adds a full silent mode full electronic shutter and that's great you know movie set shooting anytime you want it to be discreet it's a very useful feature uh, keep in mind though, you do have rolling shutter issues, even in stills, you know, if somebody moves through horizontally or, you know, a semi truck or a bus or something like that, it's going to look weird and you cannot do any fast pans while you're using that either. So, you know, that's one downside and come to think of it, much like New York right now, it's not all sunshine. There's some issues that we really kind of had, had problems with on the E6300. Features like inbuilt body stabilization, we would have loved to have seen that. I mean, you know, you got the brand new 24 to 72 8 which looks fantastic, we're gonna talk about it, but it doesn't have any sort of image stabilization. And what about all the Leica lenses? You know, and third party glass you wanna throw in here with the adapters. No stabilization support there, that would have been nice. And Canon, now that we have the phase detect, we can focus really, really well, but if that lens doesn't have IS, we don't get that either. So that was kind of upsetting. I know Jordan also has issues with no touchscreen for video, and that's valid for sure. Let's let Jordan talk about that next. Hey guys, it's Jordan, the video guy. Um, let's address this situation first. Uh, my luggage was lost. They still haven't gotten it to me. So fortunately, the standard hotel was goodly enough to provide me with this. Um, I'm comfortable, it may look casual, but I am all business when it comes to the video side. So let's get talking about that first. Now, I actually really liked the video that came off the A6000. I've used it as a home video camera for quite a while, but the A6300 is now a 4K camera. We're getting full sensor readout on the 4K 24P recording. Now that means we're not gonna see much more A, 
very little aliasing, noise should be extremely well controlled with that. We've already seen this kind of feature on the A7R2 and it does an absolutely beautiful job. Now, when we go to 30 frames per second, there it's actually going to crop the sensor and use an 8 megapixel portion of it. We took a look at it, it looks like it's going to be roughly a two times crop. So, if you like the aesthetic of 30p, you're going to want a little bit wider lenses than using the 24 frame mode. As well, they've added 120 frame per second recording, and that's continuous, not quick shots. Again, we did see a crop with this. It looks like it's very similar, about two times crop factor. Those wide lenses are going to be important, but it's really cool to see this in a camera at this price point. Despite all that, my favorite feature they've added to the 6300 is we now have S-Log recording. Uh, I had the A6000 and always felt a bit burned because there was so much dynamic range in the stills that I didn't have access to in the video recording. But now we've got that and Sony's saying we're getting 14 stops of dynamic range while shooting video. It's also really nice they've taken the gamma display assist from the uh, A7S II. It's basically a LUT, so I can look at a nice punchy contrasty image while I'm shooting, but I'm recording S-Log, so I've got that nice flat picture that I can do a lot with in post. Now, I do have a bit of a beef with that. Um, with the gamma display assist, it's giving you the image as it sits, but you always want to overexpose with S-Log. Uh, there is a really nice feature on Sony's new monitor where you can be shooting with the S-Log and it'll give you an underexposed by a couple stops image. So it's just a little more pleasing to look at, not a bunch of blown highlights. Unfortunately, this doesn't have that, but it is something they could absolutely add in firmware. And I'm really happy that feature is now on this camera, especially at this price point. It's a really sweet feature. Audio was a big problem on the A6000. There was no microphone jack and you could get external audio in but you'd have to do it through the hot shoe, which meant you were just using Sony's microphones, which is kind of a call back to the way Sony used to be achingly proprietary. This time they've put a three and a half mic jack, so I've got the option of third party microphones. They've been listening to videographers. Unfortunately, at the exact same breath, they decide to ignore videographers by not including a headphone jack, which is every bit as important if you're gonna take your audio seriously. Is still a big drawback. It means you've gotta move up to the A7 series cameras if you want a fully functioning a cam audio setup now as well a huge drawback for me is the lack of in-body stabilization i mostly use these cameras with adapted lenses and that in-body is does make a huge difference if for example a airline like delta happens to lose your bag and there's a monopod in it that you use to shoot and you have to hand hold an entire episode it's really useful if you've got something like the a7s ii with a built-in stabilizer so that this is tolerable to watch right now uh, and we do not have that on the a6300 uh, one other thing that drives me nuts that record button in the same stupid place i can reprogram it to a custom button but it would be so nice if i just put that in movie mode if the shutter button worked to activate the movie recording it's a firmware fix. I've been saying this for years. They haven't done anything about it. Hopefully this video will change things, but I'm not holding my breath. There's some really cool stuff in the 6300, but I don't really think it's gonna be a primary camera for professional video shooters. I think it's gonna be more enthusiasts looking at it. And that's where the autofocus is actually quite important. And I've kind of over time gotten used to just writing off the autofocus on mirrorless cameras. It's generally pretty terrible, but I was really surprised at Sony's demos. They had musicians playing, athletes running around, and the video autofocus was doing a great job of tracking them. I, I honestly kind of liken it to Canon's uh, dual pixel autofocus. It was very similar to that. Uh, the A7R2 did a pretty good job in that autofocus, but I found it could get fooled very easily. This seemed a lot more consistent. Now, I'm just gauging that off the back of the display. This is all speculation. I'm looking forward to a more controlled test when we get a production sample. But right now, I'm actually very excited by this. It could be a killer gimbal camera, since it's smaller and lighter than a lot of the other mirrorless cameras. A lot of shooters were looking at the A7R2 as a video camera because of that Super 35 crop on it. It was beautiful quality, and it was a format that a lot more shooters were used to. But I think the A6300 almost makes that slightly redundant if the image quality is as good. We're getting better autofocus in a smaller body for less than half the price. That's hugely compelling. I can't wait to actually go and test this theory once we get our production camera. And that'll be a little ways yet. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm going to stay here, wait for my luggage to show up, and a fully clothed Chris Nichols can now talk about the new lenses that were announced. See you guys later. All right, some exciting new lenses on the market from Sony, 7200 2.8, 24 to 72.8, and the 85mm 1.4. 
Now the 7200 we weren't able to play with really. I mean, we got to shoot it, but we couldn't take any test samples from it. It's not quite production. But first impressions, lighter and smaller than a lot of the competitors' lenses on the market. Focus is quick, weather sealed of course, rugged, image stabilized, so we're very excited to get our hands on that and give it a thorough testing. The 24-70 2.8, I liked it, it felt good, controls were nice, it focuses very, very fast. You know, Sony's actually putting two different motors in these lenses, one to drive front elements and one to drive rear elements, and it seems to work great. Focuses and tracks really, really smoothly. No image stabilization, of course, that's tough because a lot of the competitors now do have that, and of course the 6300 doesn't have inbuilt stabilization to help you out with that. Another thing too, you know, we want to test the 24 to 70 more fully before we really make our final judgment on it. First off, the lighting in the shooting that we were doing is very, very low, all just continuous light and very low. So we had to shoot 2.8 wide open at high ISOs, mostly 3200. And that's just not the best way to test this lens. We did see a little bit of softness at 2.8 and of course 3200 ISO doesn't help. So we're gonna pound this lens through at different apertures with better light later on and really give it our final judgment. The 85 1.4, definitely my favorite. I'm sure probably almost everybody's favorite at the event. Beautiful, feels great. I love the aperture ring, click stops or smooth turning as you see fit. Nice for video there. And Sony's really pushing bokeh on these lenses. The 85 1.4, beautiful autofocus areas. You're still gonna get some different shapes toward the edges, but you're not getting those footballs like a lot of other lenses have. And the 85mm 1.4, beautiful in those low light situations. I was shooting that thing wide open, f2, f2.8. You can see here a few tests where I did stop down a bit, but sharpness is excellent all the way through. And uh, you know, a lot lighter and a lot faster focusing than a lot of the other 85 1.4s on the market. So very, very impressive lens. We're excited to see that. The big downside that we really had with these lenses, again, focus by wire. It's not as bad for stills, but for video, I mean, the whole time that we're watching this press launch, Jordan is just whispering in my ear, it doesn't focus manual, it's focused by wire. He was so upset about this because for videography, it's just such a pain. You cannot get that precision. You can't pull focus. You know, it's unfortunate. I think what Sony's trying to do is maybe market a line of cinematic lenses, you know, like the PZ 28 to 135. But unfortunately, we don't get the versatility with these flagship lenses. And if you're going to go out and shoot photography and videography, it's nice to have one set of lenses. You know, for me, here's the most exciting thing, the big takeaway that I got from these lenses, and that is. Sony's listening to its customers, they wanted these zooms, but this is really getting them into the territory that professionals want to be in. I mean, this is really making it so that A7Rs and A7Ss, these can become new replacements for the SLRs that people are holding on to. This is one less excuse to keep your Canon and your Nikon. I'm not trying to push you guys that way, but this is really a smart move on Sony's part. All right, guys, so fun time again in New York City. We had a great time at the Sony press launch. Uh, you know, we never know exactly how it's going to go. Are we going to get a camera to review? I mean, in this case, it became more of just a, a multi-review of all the new stuff, but it was exciting stuff. The 6300, I mean, this is really looking to be a more intermediate or advanced mirrorless camera. I mean, they're really kicking this out into the market to start tackling that heavier work, the journalism, the sports, the wildlife, you know, the weather sealing, the faster focusing, the eight frame per second live view. This is all good stuff. And again, this is really Sony pushing their market even further into the realm of SLRs. So that's exciting to see. And of course, I've already talked about how I feel like the lenses are doing a very similar thing. So Sony's got an aggressive approach here and we like to see that as camera viewers. It's exciting. You know, overall, uh, I think you guys are gonna really like this new camera. Um, we still wanna get our hands on it. We're gonna do a full review. It certainly deserves it. But from what it looks like, this camera has stepped up the video work quite huge. It's tackling other markets, and that makes it, so far, a very exciting winner in our books. Thanks so much, guys, for joining us here in New York City again. And uh, don't forget, subscribe, check us out on Instagram, tweet to us, tell us your thoughts. Certainly, Sony's making a stir, and we wanna hear about it from you guys. Until next time, thanks so much.